Who's considered the victor in a war? You know, you, you think about the wars, you hear about these generals, right? Ulysses S. Grant and, and, uh, and Lee, right? You, you have these people, they're considered the victors. They don't even necessarily have to be doing any of the fighting. Why? Because they're the ones planning and sending out the people and responsible for the victory or the defeat. I mean, this is, this is an easy concept to get. The Jews are the ones who were responsible for killing Jesus, but if that's not good enough to help you understand, look, if you would, at Acts chapter 10. We're just going to see biblical evidence of this and proof where the Bible flat out says it. People trying to whitewash this to get Christians to just accept Judaism and to call themselves Judeo-Christian and just yoke up with these anti-Christ Jews. It's unbelievable. Acts chapter 10, look at verse number 38. Acts 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Look, he's talking about Jesus. He went about doing good. He went about healing people. He went about because God was with him. Look at verse 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Who's they? Well, the only group mentioned here is the Jews. When he says, in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree, him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Let's get a little bit more clearer. Turn back to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel. So wait, who's he talking to? The men of Israel. Ye men of Israel, also known as Jews. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken. Who's ye? Ye men of Israel. Ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. The blame is going to the men of Israel. They have crucified and slain him, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Jump down to verse number 36. Verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Who crucified him? All the habits of Israel, the, the, the Jews. Okay, Acts chapter 3, flip over to chapter 3. Verse number 12, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel. Again, the crowd is the same. He's talking to the same people. Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One. And the just, who's that? Jesus. You denied him and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it. Look at this. As did also your rulers. He's talking to the multitude of Israel, of the Jews, and he says that you did it as your rulers did also. So the people are trying to say, oh, it was just the rulers, it was just the Pharisees that, that were responsible for killing Jesus. No, it's not, because he's lumping in the whole group with the rulers, as did also your rulers. 